Welcome back, everyone. So, um, one of the big things with regards to sixes, at least from like a casual player's perspective, is the class selection. And for many, it's kind of a turnoff. Um, you know, someone's like an engineer main or a spy main, and those classes aren't, you know, represented full time in sixes. Um, and if they try to just play, for example, an engineer to mid, then they get yelled at by their team or the other team or whoever. Um, and there is good reason, not for getting yelled at, uh, but there is good reason for why, you know, there is that distinction between off class and main class. A lot of people describe it in terms of... Let's just get the demo going already, actually. A lot of people... Oh, right in the volume. Um, a lot of people describe it in terms of generalists and specialists, which I think is a fine distinction. Um, because there's very few situations in which, you know, a scout, a soldier, um, is, you know, bad, if any, honestly. Um... And there are basically no situations in which you don't want to have a demo or a medic. Um, but every class, I think, has its place. Um, it's just not full-time. So, you know, rambling aside uh, for the intro here, I am going to be talking about every off-class, what they're good at, what they're bad at, when you might want to use it, and how you might want to, or like what the counterplay is, basically. Uh, so you'll notice there's actually a pyro on the screen. That pyro was ran to mid. Because um, this is from a match from last night against uh, the Goblin Zone, who are pretty well known for just trying, or just, you know, they don't shy away from just like full-time off-classing. Um, bunch of goblin strats, what have you. So, yeah, I thought it'd be fitting for the topic. Um, for starters, though, we may as well talk about Pyro, since it is that first off-class in the team select. Pyro is, in my opinion, the least useful class in sixes. Um, and there's a few reasons for that. Pyro is slow. Pyro is extremely short range. Uh, and not only that, Pyro is very countered by the other short range class in scout and also in my opinion pyro is countered by demo um sure you can reflect as a pyro but you know reflecting stickies doesn't really do that much you're still getting zoned out and a lot of the time they can just debt like as it's in reflect range and uh, you take the damage anyway so yeah pyro gets zoned out very easily is very slow class that being said, um, Pyro has some advantages. So for starters, um, just spamming flares and getting a ton of afterburn can be a big deal in like a team fight, for instance. So you'll see some like mid fights, a Pyro can be useful um, just because if the fight goes on long term and like four people are burning simultaneously, that's like a lot of damage taking actually. And uh, when you see a log with like a full-time pyre or something, it's not uncommon for them to be actually getting a lot of damage per minute um, just in, you know, flare, spam, afterburn kind of stuff. Um, so that's useful. But usually the niche you see pyro uh, in is actually something we're doing right now, which if this was an STV demo, I would go over and show what my pyro is doing. So basically, pyro's air blast is... Uh, in my opinion, a, stu a stupid mechanic, but uh, it is the best zoning tool in the entire game. Um, because you can air blast ubered players, they're not immune to knockback. And there's basically a couple uses for this. So on a map such as, let's say, Gully Wash uh, is a common example. Where the map is very enclosed space, very small. It's not uncommon to see a pyro... A scout switch to pyro on last um, and play near a doorway whichever doorway is spotted the combo is trying to take their uber in on this ad of course um, and just play to air blast that uber in and stuff it completely without 
letting it get in at all. Um, because of that, that powerful air blast tool to, to zone them out. That can be a powerful strat. In my opinion, a better strategy is gun pyro, where uh, you have a pyro playing with your sentry gun to spam players away from your gun. What we were doing here on Metalworks Last is kind of a hybrid between the two, where the pyro is on the crates by the doorway, ready to spam the combo into the doorway. But once they get through, the pyro is like slowly but surely kiting space so as not to die, um, and then kind of transitions to just spamming, uh, reflecting away the spam from the gun. Um, I think it is important in Disad Last to not be giving the other team easy kills, so a lot of the time a pyro playing to stuff a doorway, unless they like really, really do it like extremely well, if they only get a few air blasts off and die, um, it still favors the team that's pushing a lot of the time. Uh, by and large though, that's kind of just the niche that pyro has. I will say, actually having played this match gave me the insight that pyro is a little bit of a spam immune class in some respects. Like a pyro can kind of just linger in a place that other classes would be getting like hard spammed in because it's far enough range that you know any rocket reflects are going to be trivial and as a result like soldiers can't safely spam the pyro. So you get to get away with a little more aggressive positioning as a result. Of course you are absolute fodder to any demo or scout so it's still not um, you know, super strong in that respect. But still, something I noticed. So yeah, Pyro, kind of the least useful of the off classes. Very niche, usually just uh, a disad last option. And even then, it's only on certain lasts um, where um, the, the spacing of the last makes sense. Because if the doors are really far away, like on a process or a sunshine or something, you can't really get to them reliably. You're just going to be dying, and you don't want to be feeding the team that pick with their uber. Um, so yeah, that's Pyro. Now, as far as the next off class goes, and what is the next off class? It goes Heavy and then Engineer, so we'll do Heavy next. Heavy's actually quite good, um, because Heavy is just a big meat shield, basically. Um, I suppose we can talk about loadouts briefly a little bit as well, so we'll, we'll touch on Pyro loadout just briefly. Um, I think... Honestly, stock flamethrower is probably the best because, you know, you still have the, the full, uh, or like the the cheapest air blast. You don't really need to be switching, switching weapons that often. People sometimes run to greaser. I think the, the damage penalty is not that great. Uh, I think stock is fine. And as far as secondaries go, um, I've seen actually people put in some work with flare gun, but definitely um, squirt shot is... Probably the easiest to use because you kind of just shoot it like a rocket. It just like auto explodes, has spam damage, whatever. Um, and it can juggle people, which is nice. I think that detonator is probably the best, or at least like my favorite for pyro, because getting afterburn is way more reliable with detonator than any other flare. Um, and you you can jump with a uh, score shot. Um, for the record, I didn't mention that. But the detonator jumps go much further, and having just that extra little bit of mobility on Pyro can be nice. Uh, oh, and one little thing I forgot about Pyro as well is uh, Pyro is really, really good in exchanges because not only um, does the flamethrower just travel through players, so you can just spread damage really easily and force a lot of flashes, but your air blast means you can actually zone the other team's uber during an exchange. So pyro exchanges are actually fantastic, and sometimes you'll even see like a defending team take a pyro uber off of their own last when the other team's like pushed up into lobby just to force that exchange. And something that uh, the other team's pyro in this match, Muma, was pretty good at is during exchanges, air blasting a player into a corner or like way over committed so that they die in the post. So stuff like that can be uh, quite nice. Uh, but yeah, I think that wraps it up for pyro, and let's move on to heavy. So Heavy's a big meat shield, deals a lot of close range damage, a little bit of mid range damage, and usually um, Heavy is again just an off class you'll see on last holding, because Heavy has some pretty big downsides. Um, the first and foremost is the speed. Heavy is so slow that 
you can't really push with a heavy that effectively, or you can't transition points. Uh, you can't maneuver around the map as quickly, and being able to maneuver around the map quickly is one of the most important things you can do in sixes as a team. Mobility is kind of king. Um, yeah, so heavy kind of sucks for for any type of prolonged fight back and forth. Um, and on top of that, like heavy's literal speed on the ground is so slow that you are just spam fodder. It is so easy to get damage on a heavy um, that, yeah, it, it's, it can be difficult to do anything. Now, the high health pool is nice. Like, you can get tanked really hard and get arrow tanked by your medic to live through a lot more than, than any other class would. But, uh, yeah, heavy's still just going to draw a ton of spam. One thing that uh, a lot of players kind of feared for a long time was heavy to mid and a lot of bans for heavy and his unlocks were expressly to avoid that um right now the gloves of running urgently are unbanned as well as actually the steak sandwich so you can run a heavy to mid in some capacity um i haven't seen it be that good yet but i also haven't seen it really get tested out that much but yeah heavy uh is mostly used on last because of that Mobility, excuse me, those mobility problems. A lot of that is uh, kind of reduced when you are on your own last, right? Because your spawn's right there, so you can switch onto heavy and you're immediately in the action, and then you can switch off of heavy and immediately push out or something like that. So, yeah, heavy's uh, pretty potent for that. And typically, heavy serves as kind of a focus fire check of sorts in a last hold basically um later in a fight and i'll elaborate more on like a last hold when i get to engineer but uh later on in a last hold fight um you'll typically have someone switch to heavy or already be on heavy and if that heavy doesn't get focused down and killed then you generally win the hold uh, as long as they're in a position to at least like somewhat contest point. So, yeah, being able to focus fire the heavy in uh, an uber push is one of the very important things for a team to do uh, in order to actually you know, successfully push. Um, and that's kind of the main meta game niche that heavy has right now, is just that off class uh, for holding last. I will say, you can play heavy offensively into the other team's last, which we've actually already seen in this demo earlier, uh, which I think is really good. I think a heavy push into last is fantastic because, I mean, again, heavy is just a class that can output a lot of damage and has so much health that uh, it's, it's much harder for a defending team to focus damage onto a heavy pushing into their own last, especially since they don't want to be like committing much uh, to the fight because it's it's so risky. They really just want to hold up and uh, you know play the spam, play their resups, stuff like that. Uh, so a heavy into last is really good, but of course is very timing dependent. Um, you don't want to wait that much for your heavy to roll out. Uh, and in some cases, you know, you don't have enough uber add to be able to wait. But in those cases where you have a ton of add and a player's already, like, died on the previous fight, uh, so a classic example, let's say, is a player, a soldier sacks into last, gets the, let's say gets a drop on their med, although forcer drop wouldn't make that much of a difference, gets the drop, they die, of course, during the sack, and they decide to spawn up heavy for the push, because there's plenty of time for them to, to roll out, and etc. And now you have a heavy uh, pushing into last, which is, in my opinion, a uh, very potent class in a situation like that. But of course, it has to be a situation like that. It doesn't happen all the time, so most games, um, you you won't see a heavy pushing into last. Um, yeah, that's kind of the, the meta game niche of heavy. As far as loadout goes, I know I'm like, uh, at this point, kind of publicly known and uh, people love to, to make jokes about my public disdain for the Tomislav. I really don't think it's good for what heavy is. You know, you, you have this high damage, high health class 
and people really like using the Tomislav because they think it's well it is faster to rev but uh, it does feel like it just does so much less damage and I, I, I know people like have done tests and what have you and like random boss servers or whatever but uh, yeah for for what you want in sixes like players dying as fast as possible is really really important and you can feel like the the damage fall off of the the Tomislav is is noticeable and I don't think revving fast matters in sixes whatsoever. I think moving fast does. So, th so the weapon that I sing the praises of a lot is the Brass Beast because it just does a shit ton of damage that you just you catch people out uh, who don't expect to be caught out because you just output way more damage than they're used to, and the the damage resistance is absolutely insane. And uh, Brass Beast heavies will survive stuff that they never should be able to get arrow tank to hell. That being said, the movement speed is quite important, so I think stock is really good as well. Um, yeah, basically, I just think the Tomislav is bad. You can use whatever you want, honestly, because a heavy is still a heavy, but uh, there's some there's some considerations you can have for the uh, the primary. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it for heavy. So let's talk engineer next. Uh, Engineer is maybe the most used off-class in the game, and for really good reason. Basically, any time... Well, Engineer, and more importantly, Engineer Sentry Guns, are the most potent defensive force in the entire game. Um, yeah, basically full stop. A level 3 Sentry Gun will lock on pretty quickly to basically any any door, any player in the range, and have, you know, perfect accuracy. So it makes peeking very, very difficult. As a result, when you're on last, um, a sentry gun is basically the most important part of your hold. Uh, every time you're ever holding, you holding last you want to have a sentry gun uh it is that important it makes holding last that much easier um yeah if you're playing on a team and your scouts don't like to off class to engineer uh bully them into it's like just a part of playing the game it is that important because with no sentry gun you can basically just like double sack into last and it'll be fine like you you're pretty likely to get a force you should just be happy to do that over and over again for the four minutes and you know you you're likely to get at the gun makes everything so much more difficult and typically with uh most holds you have a very centralized sentry gun that actually covers a lot of space and covers doors um which just makes juggling the spam i talked about rotations uh in a previous video maybe even my most recent one and like rotating spam on doorways a sentry gun makes that so much easier on last because you have a little bit of leeway if a door is being watched by a gun um yeah so sentries are really important um as far as sentry placement goes there are two styles of guns, or two situations that you want guns, um, which is basically evens or disad. So what you're looking for in an evens gun is kind of what I've been describing, is that very centralized gun that watches a lot of space. Um, definitely more forward than something else, but it's fine because it's even uber, so you get to hold the doorways, and your engineer you know, will be able to, to do all this stuff in that. Uh, to construct and maintain that building. Um, as far as disad guns go, generally, uh, what you want is you want to get it up as fast as possible because you want to have it as high a level as possible by the time the push happens. So typically, disad guns get constructed near the spawn just because it's easier for the engineer to reset. Um, and if you have a surplus of time, which a lot of the time you won't. Uh, but if, for instance, um, let's say the other team exchanged into your last for whatever reason, uh, and their med died, or your med died after the Ubers were used, uh, or after the Ubers ended, uh, so they have add to push last with, but they won't have for a while, because they just used. In a case like that, you have plenty of time to get a gun up and put it wherever you want. So usually in times like that, where you have that extra time, what you, l or what I like in a disad gun at least, is, uh... Something that's kind of a pain to spam out, 
or at least something a little unexpected. Um, so, you know, some random gun around a corner somewhere, uh, something that maybe their uber pops in and, you know, goes somewhere, and then they have to turn or maybe even go back to take out the gun, stuff like that. Uh, maybe a gun that, like, kills a flank member trying to get in because the combo didn't see it. Just something sneaky, something tricky. I think your disad guns, where you have all that time, um, let you get a little bit more creative, but by and large, most of the time, you're just building a gun in a very default spot, kind of near a uh, spawn shutter. That being said, um, in these disad holds, if you can, as an engineer, tank your gun and actively heal it, at least a little bit, uh, that's very worth doing. Um, I mentioned the gun pyro type of hold. In those holds, as an engineer, you want to be tanking your gun for sure. But uh, even if you don't have support, just healing your gun for a little bit could be nice. Now, very, very important. You shouldn't die on Engineer basically ever. It, it's a horrible class to die on because you as the Engineer aren't doing anything. It's your gun doing everything. So, you know, that gun can go down and you just switch classes. Uh, usually it's a heavy, actually, uh, if you don't have one already. In any case, though... Um, if you can tank your gun, sometimes it just stays up because a lot of demos get complacent with taking out sentry guns. Um, they don't burst it down in an instant and try to just like sticky spam it or, you know, shoot a few pipes at it or something or just like sustained damage, which you can tank through. Um, so there are some cases that you might be able to tank a gun unexpectedly long because their demo is not playing the, the burst damage correctly. Um, so there's that to consider. That being said, uh, you don't want to be in range of your gun as it's eating a ton of damage. Just try and kind of dance in and out of that range so you're not eating that spam. And this is only something you can do if it's constructed like basically at your spawn door so that you can immediately duck out to safety uh, when the gun's going to go down. Um, as far as full-time NG goes, it's really, really bad. In my, It's probably the worst class to run full-time uh, or just off of mid in general. Because uh, it's just a slower scout, and scout relies on his speed a lot. Sentry guns really don't do anything in like wide open points um, at all. They're so easy to take out from like a soldier or a demo. Um, sometimes you see like an engineer building forward on like second or something. Um, and sometimes you'll see actually like an engineer pushes out of last because they have revenge crits or something and then end up like building guns on further points. It's really not not that good, I think, because unlike a last where everything is like so claustrophobic at times and excuse me, everything's just strangle. It's just a complete stranglehold on all the doors. Um, a, a, any second or any midpoint on basically any 5 CP map. It should be really easy to spot where a gun is at and take it out like instantly. Um, so engineers just not good. Has has very little utility um, on as full time on any 5 CP. Koth you can make more of a case for it just because the mobility issue is not that big of a deal, and you know a more stagnant gun position is going to be less uh, less of a problem than it would be on 5 CP. But still. Even on Koth, I think Engineer is, is one of the weaker uh, combat classes to have. Um, as far as loadout goes for Engineer, um, when you're building a gun, you just want to use the Jag because guns construct the quickest. But once your gun is already built, um, so let's say you're playing evens on last, if you want to optimize it, then the way to do that would be to build your gun on the Jag, and then switch to either stock or even like their Eureka effect um, when it's already built. Um, because those weapons heal your gun more efficiently than the Jag does, um, which can be quite nice. Eureka effect as well like lets you teleport into spawn, uh, although I suppose if they hear you teleport, then they might know you're in spawn and would then try and peek your gun and spam it since you aren't there to tank it. So there's like some metagame stuff there, I suppose. But... Um, yeah, just switching off of the Jag if you have the gun already built is uh, is a good optimization. Not something that really anyone uh, does that much. Most people just don't really care. But it would be the optimal thing to do if you don't mind uh, switching loadouts. As far as secondaries go, I think every secondary is banned except for stock. So 
you're going to be stuck with the pistol, which is whatever. Um, and primary, uh, you have some options. Now, the Frontier Justice is quite good. I think if your gun is getting kills, i.e. the other team is just sacking into your gun, then it's probably worth switching to the Frontier Justice if you don't already have it. Um, and while I love having revenge crits when I play Engineer, um, I think it's generally a bad idea to push out of last on Engineer just because you have crits. Um, you're still just such a slow class that sure you could like nuke the next fight you take, but then after that, like, you're still gonna have to find a way to switch off, and you're just... Keep in mind, it's gonna be a scout off-classing to NG, um, basically every time. So, you just want, uh... You want that speed, you wanna have the scout, uh, rather than the engineer. So, usually, like, even if you have a few revenge crits, sometimes it's best if your team is pushing out to just give it up, switch to scout. Um, other primaries, it's just shotgun is good, uh, in my opinion. Widowmaker is probably fine. I mean, there's the whole metal concern, so if you're, like, struggling for metal, then, uh, you know, probably not. But it does actually do a little bit extra damage to the player that your gun is shooting at, which is interesting. Um, Pompson's a funny gimmick. You can actually erase some uber charge, but I... It's, uh, <laughs> one time, there was one single time that that's come into play. Um in like all of five weeks that a teammate of mine was using it a season or two ago which was the other team actually on metalworks was peaking main uh to take an exchange into last because uh the round timer was almost up and my ng was just spamming pompson so they rounded the corner got hit with the pompson and then their scout couldn't get saved or couldn't get used on in time so uh got dropped into uber and it was a bad uber for them but pompson's funny but uh yeah not that great uh, Rescue Ranger, of course, is banned because that would be insanely broken. Um, yeah, just just shotgun by default is pretty good. Switching to Frontier Justice if you get the crits is uh, a good way to go. And that pretty much wraps up Engineer. Um, and yeah, let's get into the next one, which I think is going to be... It goes Sniper, then Spy, right? Yeah, so Sniper's next. Sniper is... A very very common off class um, and people kind of talk about it as the stalemate breaker now personally I kind of despise sniper and I think sixes would be much better without the class but that's not what this is about this is about uh, how sniper works how to play it so basically the way Sniper works in the meta game is in a lot of different situations, actually. So if it's the most common you'll see, I'll say, is either evens or disad. So if it's even ubers, and let's say you're pushing last or something, if your team is not really getting much value out of a sack, then you can switch a player to Sniper and then play the Sniper into that point, right? Um, and there's a few ways this can play out. So first, your sniper can um, just kill their medic or something. Like, if their hold isn't great, then you can just kill the important class that you spawned up sniper to try and kill uh, to secure yourself at or whatever. Usually, holds are much better. Um, and, you know, a medic is not going to be standing in a sniper sight line. And in those cases, usually what the sniper is trying to do is get a pick on a player holding a door, like a soldier. And then with that pick, get a deeper peek. Essentially, like, just picking it thread by thread until you get a deep enough peek to get a force or a drop on their medic or something. Um, now, of course, that isn't always the case either. Um, so another good or important aspect to utilize if your team is playing a sniper in an even uber stalemate into the other team is uh, to force specific positioning. So you'll notice the hold that we have been having on last is our med and myself and our dispenser are all pushed up really close to the front, like near the doors. Um, which is a little bit vulnerable. The reason it's vulnerable 
excuse me, is because, uh, you know, you're just close to the doors. You have less time to react to a bomb through a door like that. It's very dependent on not only the doors being really properly held, so a sniper can't get a peek, for instance, but also the sentry gun being there to instantly juggle away um, any bomber or any player trying to get through a door. So when you have the sniper and you force that very close claustrophobic positioning, you are making the other team a little bit more vulnerable to a bomb. So a lot of the time, if you have a sniper, you can exploit that by forcing that forward positioning and then sacking into that that forward positioning with a soldier. Um, yeah, so that's that's a generally the way that sniper is played into, let's say, like a last point or something. <clears throat> or just in general on even ubers. Now, disad sniper is very common as well. Uh, you're expecting the other team to push, of course, so you can just kind of sit along uh, any sight line that you choose and have a fully charged shot uh, ready to drop their med. And against that, you know, as the pushing team, um, spotting is, you know, the most important thing. Just identifying where that sniper is at is extremely important. Sometimes they're hiding in a forward spawn if they got a forward spawn before you denied it. Um, stuff like that. If you identify that they have a sniper, Basically every time I recommend just popping through and taking the uber because a lot of the time the sniper is actually gonna be caught to an uber um, If you're aggressive with it So just taking that uber uh, It's so hard to try and dry push against a sniper that a lot of the time you're just forced to use unfortunately So that's yeah, that's the the disad sniper um, a little bit more one-dimensional than the even sniper I suppose and then there's just counter sniping I guess on last so and this is where like when people talk about sniper being like a stalemate breaker class I like very much disagree because uh, you know sniper is not limited to just the pushing team and giving them the option to get a drop uh, it can also be arguably even more potent on the defending team because one of the main ways to disassemble a hold especially a last hold is by peeking a door and spamming down a gun or spamming down a player and then sacking. Just, you know, basic flowchart with your pressure. And a sniper kind of hard denies that. Even guns that might be quite vulnerable to spam are suddenly not vulnerable to spam if a sniper's in the spawn door uh, or on some like crazy long sight line spotting that door. So in many respects, sniper does create stalemates as well, um, not just break them. But that counter sniping defensive sniper is very potent uh, because you are just not allowing the other team to peek doors. Makes things very difficult. Um, and yeah, that, that's a another important use for sniper on your own last. It can be a very powerful off class to have. Um, so yeah. Is that it for Sniper? I mean, sometimes you see Sniper just kind of run full-time. It's a weird class in that respect, because in my opinion, it is a bad class to run full-time. Um, because Sniper is, again, slow, can't really defend himself. Like, of course, you could hit some insane shot. Actually, Sniper is a little better at defending himself than I think some people realize. Um, like, a player getting on a Sniper and then getting, like... Just the snipers holding S and repeating repeatedly like no scope body shot body shotting them for 50s like that's not insignificant damage um, and um, actually not too bad at defending himself in my opinion like surf one rocket and suddenly like you're you're a little bit uh, okay that being said though sniper is still you know much much worse at defending himself than any of the main classes um, and also very much soldier fodder um, generally against the sniper what you're trying to do is the important classes avoid the sight line bomb a soldier through to get on the sniper right that's just your basic flowchart approach to it um, yeah so that's kind of what the sniper is all about what what uh, what he does in sixes now of course when you see the full-time sniper a lot of the time like if they just hit every shot then there's like sometimes not much you can do it can be kind of a stupid class in that regard and you know sometimes they just hit the shot on the guy that spot I, I could now I'm getting into like complaining about the, the class because it has issues but we'll we'll cut it there um, as far as loadouts go really hard to go wrong with 
the stock rifle. I think Machina is banned, and probably Sydney Sleeper is banned as well, if I had to imagine. Um, yeah, stock is, is just really good. Being able to just 150 headshot people, um, fully charged body shot. Medics is really important. Anyone using, like, using the... Cl I've seen people use the classic, and I've heard arguments for the classic um, being that... When you get to charge without scoping, then you're less vulnerable to those soldier bombs um, because you have the full vision. You're not tunnel visioned on something. I am not a classic believer. I think it's bad. Um, like, not being able to one-shot body shot a medic sucks. Uh, and for that reason, I think the Hitman's Heatmaker is bad as well. Although, the, the suppressor is actually, like, useful. Uh, sometimes you can get a few shots off before they realize, uh, which is cool. Anyway, uh, stock is, is pretty much the best. That's that's basically what everyone uses. And, yeah, secondaries, you have some options. Gerardi, of course, is banned because that is broken. Um, but, I mean, Razorback is, is just bad because, you know, people aren't really running spies. And when they do run spies, they don't run spies to counter snipers. Um, but Danger Shield is actually, like, kind of useful sometimes because some people do, like, play Pyro against Sniper. Um, out of their own last, for instance. Something like that. Here we see a, a little um, disad sniper, which <laughs> I just take forever to, to spot. So we're probably going to play to just pop this Uber, if I had to guess. Um, if it is out, I don't know if it is. Anyway, um, Danger Shield can be nice. SMG is kind of just the default, um, what most people use, because it is quite nice. Uh, as far as melees go, it really doesn't matter that much. Um, just use whatever you want. Um, yeah, and some people do use Huntsman. Huntsman, of course, is like a much sillier option. It does make Sniper a little better as just a regular walking around class. Um, and it is still comparably deadly uh, to, to a Sniper Rifle. Um, not as deadly in any meaningful... Well, you're definitely... You know, 95% of people will be used. 99% of people will just be using the rifle, but some people just find the Huntsman funny. But it is it is still a long range one shot potential, so you still have to respect sight lines pretty similarly. But you can like react to them to some degree, um, even though they have those broken headboxes. Uh, but yeah, pretty honestly, just using stock sniper is probably a, a decent way to go. And that should wrap things up for sniper, uh, kind of how it's played where it fits into the metagame. And we can move on to the last class, Spy. Um, so, Spy is very hit or miss. People, a lot of casual people, um, have the notion that Spy is the weakest class in the game, um, which, in a lot of settings, I can agree with, um, because you're kind of, at least in like a casual setting, you're, and even to some degree a competitive setting, you're you're very reliant on how inept your opponents are. Um, most other classes you can really outplay someone. Um, but if you're a spy, then yeah, not it's, it's much harder. Um, you're basically operating on the assumption that people are not going to know you exist, which if they know you exist, then you're oftentimes going to be useless. A big pause here. Um... So, yeah, where is... Sp I, I was talking about... Spy's actually, like, kind of useful in sixes. Um, but, again, it's hit or miss. Spy is extremely dependent on timings, in my opinion. Where, if the other team suspects there is a spy or knows there's a spy, then suddenly your likelihood of being effective no! um, is just dashed so low. Um... So you are dependent on those timings where a spy might not be expected in order to be successful. Um, basically what a spy is looking for is, of course, a backstab, usually on a medic. And um, stabbing other classes can be quite nice, though. So getting a pick on a demo or something can be, can be very useful. Um, but you're largely looking for a stab on a medic. Now that's if you're just playing a spy for a pick, and the times that you see a spy like this, so of course you can see it in to last, you can see it in a stalemate, it's always gonna inherently be more expected in a stalemate. 
then in a weird transition. So if you can catch a spy timing in those weird transition phases, then it can be quite nice. Of course, there is the downside of if the other team is moving forward, you are a lot of the time too slow to catch up, which I'll cover a bit uh, later on. Um, that's not the only use for spy though, because the sapper is actually quite nice. As I talked about earlier with the engineer part and how sentry guns are kind of the linchpin of a lot of holds, and also the sniper part of how a lot of the time having a sniper, or even by default, some teams will play very forward positioning that's very dependent on their gun and is a little more vulnerable. Um, a somewhat recent metagame development we've seen is a sap in sack. I don't know if it really has like a agreed upon name. That's just what I call it. Um, but basically, you have a spy whose play is not to go for the stab, but actually to sap the sentry gun while a soldier bombs in. And as a result, the gun is not going to be shooting that soldier, not denying that bomb. And then that single soldier should be able to get a lot of value on their bomb towards the medic because, uh, you know, the medic is so forward with a hold like a Metalworks here, or sometimes you see it on Sultry, um, or just wherever, right? So that can be another use for Spy. Um, yeah, very timing dependent class, and there's a lot of things that can screw Spy over. So for starters, your cloak, you can just be heard, um, and you know, if people suspect you, then it's, it's much less likely that you work. But the big downside is that the other team's spy, and I suppose this is another use for spy in some regard, um, spy can be used to check off classes. So if you disguise as a class, you will prioritize disguising as someone playing on that class. So, um, if you, short answer is if you disguise as the same class over and over again, and you get the same name every time, then you can be pretty confident that someone is playing that class. If you use the 3D um, HUD model, then in the other the player you're disguising as has hats, then you know beyond a cert or beyond a doubt that uh, they're playing that class. Or if you see that they have any unlocks um, in their hands, then you know beyond a doubt. So spy can be used to check off classes, and if you check that and verify that the other team has a spy, then at that point, it's kind of a matter of how long is that spy gonna waste because their play shouldn't ever work um, against the team that knows beyond a reasonable doubt that there is a spy. Um, so yeah, that is another kind of downside of, of spy as a stalemate breaking class is you can be a huge time waster. Now, one really important thing I think is uh, when you have the spy, of course you have to respect the, f the fact that you have a spy, that you're essentially just down a combat class, but um, you you don't want to act like you're playing safe because you have a spy. And what I mean by this is when your spy is getting into position, right, if you just don't sack for like a minute on last, teams get very suspicious and start suspecting a spy. Um, because something is out of the norm, right? A team has been sacking consistently, you know, every respawn cycle for two minutes, and then suddenly they don't. You're going to be like, what's going on? They're setting something up. Um, watch out for spy. Of course, if you don't already off class check and last. If you're like really try harding, then literally when that guy spawns, you just off class check, but whatever. Um, so yeah, playing like very non standard in those stalemates uh, because you have the spy is an easy way to tip the other team off that you that you have that class, um, which you don't want to do. You kind of want to play more normally. Now, pressure is very important for your spy because you want people forced to look at things other than your spy, of course. So being able to pressure makes their likelihood of a successful stab much higher. Uh, so keep that in mind. And I've never talked about spy as like a full-time class. Uh, it's terrible as a full-time class. Um, yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to use it. Um, and actually, one use for spy that I didn't really talk about is for back caps. Um, spy, of course, with cloak can get behind another team without them ever knowing, or even if they know, they can't stop it. Um, so, you know, again, a matter of timing. But uh, if let's say 
a player died just before a last push was about to take place. Uh, they could spawn spy, uh, or if they died really early in the last push, they could spawn spy and make it to last in time by the other by the time the other team is pushing out, um, and just back cap for free. You can back cap at any point on spy really. Um, but having only times one cap time means it's like not that effective. Um, so I wouldn't be spawning spy with the intention of back capping necessarily unless it's last. Um, as far as countering the spy back cap, a lot of it is just a matter of knowing um, when they spawned. So you'll notice uh, when I'm playing a game, uh, something that I'll communicate a lot of the time is if a team has a spy timing. Um, so if everyone on the other team just died immediately, um, then you know you're safe to just push out. Um, if, you know, three players died immediately and three players lived throughout the entire push, then you know you just have to spot the three players and that you're good and that they don't have a spy. If a player dies and then, you know, two more players die in the push and then you know, you're, you're ready to push out. Then that one player that died early has a spy time. And you want to spot three players, of course, because three players are alive. But you might want to play your flank kind of close to your chest and like ready to, to stop a guy on last, something like that. So it's really just a matter of figuring out and reasoning out, you know, where a spy could possibly, um, have a timing and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So now let's talk loadouts for Spy. Spy actually, I think, has a, a few loadout options. Quite a few, actually. So we'll start with the revolvers. The Lettrange is very good um, because having more cloak gives you access to more timings, basically. If you can get into position faster, and potentially reposition, um, then you just have way more action or way more options to take your play for your stab or whatever you're doing. Um, you can make that more. How do I want to phrase this? Basically, you uh, have more options with how how you can take your play, and. You, you you can be more successful as a result versus if you just barely have any cloak then you're kind of shoehorned into taking maybe like kind of a shitty timing uh, because you're like five steps further back than you want to be but you know this opportunity isn't going to line up again and you just kind of have to go um, so having more cloak just gives you access to more timings basically so Leitrange is good for that that being said do not sleep on the stock revolver because that thing as much as I hate it because it just randomly connects shots and randomly misses for me it is it does so much damage um, like uh, an unexpected amount of damage if you line up all the shots um, to the point where against some like particularly paranoid teams or just in general like if you know it's going to be unlikely that you're getting a stab sometimes you can still have a successful spy play just by going out with the revolver to to start um the revolver is is really good it can like three shot medics and you can catch a lot of people um off guard as a result so even though the extra cloak from the Leitrange is nice and worth using if you want that um the revolver is absolutely a good option. Um, ambassador, I think, is... Some people use it. I have not seen many impressive Ambassador plays, um, at least not at a high level. It, it just feels too inconsistent uh, to me. Um, yeah, I don't think it's great. Diamondback, I don't know if it's banned or not. It's probably worth using, um, but honestly, I might use stock over it. It depends on, like, Living on Spy after getting a stab is just really uncommon, but I suppose, I don't know. I don't think Diamondback's allowed, but uh, it might not be. Uh, it'd be worth using, probably. Whatever. Um, as far as your knife goes, um, stock, of course, is fine, and what a lot of people use. Not really any downsides to it. 
Honestly, there is something to be said for a lot of the watches. I think the kunai is really bad in sixes because you just die to spam, uh, which is bad. And the extra health after getting a stab doesn't really benefit you because you're not... Um, you're not going to get any extra value in all likelihood after you get a stab because the other team knows you're on spy. So kunai is really bad. Big earner is not too shabby, actually, because... Of course, the downside of only having 100 HP is a big deal if you are suddenly in a threshold to die to one type. Um, that matters. But the extra speed does give you some chain stab potential. Now, of course, once you get the stab, people are aware of the spy. But usually there's some latency in not just when calls like that are... Not when someone even realizes when they've been stabbed and, you know, then communicates it, but then you know, in whatever call or, you know, voice client the the other team is talking in when it actually registers through and when people actually understand and, like, register the call. Basically what I'm saying is there's, there's some delay between getting a stab and everyone hearing and realizing there's a spy in which you can get more kills. Um, and the big earner basically opens up, you know, your range for getting more kills a little bit wider, which is useful. Um, so in particular, Big Earner is going to be useful as for those like transitional uh, spy plays where maybe you're expecting to lose some ground and you catch the other team uh, pushing through a door or something and you're able to get multiple stabs as a result. Best case scenario, that's kind of what you're looking for with the Big Earner. Um, so yeah, that's the Big Earner worth using. I think the Spicicle as well is worth using. In if not so much for countering pyros uh because you know if there's a pyro and they're spy checking you you're worthless anyway you're not gonna do anything like sure you can live but living won't matter because you are on that class uh to do something and with you unable to do something it doesn't matter if you live or die in fact it might be better to die and switch to a different class that can do something anyway um i think this and I can actually maybe even look. I'm pretty sure that the spicycle has this. Does it have the silent killer? I don't know if it has the silent killer or not. If it does, then it's worth using. If it doesn't, then it's kind of neutral. I think. Um, I was gonna talk about your eternal reward next because I think it's not good. Uh, because it's it's hard to call, right? So the cloak drain is a big deal because of what I mentioned earlier. You are just limited on timings, and yeah, having the big earner as a result, or excuse me, having the your eternal reward as a result, really locks you into much worse timings, and that that gimps your your possibilities of you know getting those good plays as the spy. Um. But the Silent Killer is a big deal for that same reason of, like, people don't really recognize necessarily when a stab has happened. And usually, people will hear the stab happen before they hear their teammate calling that they got stabbed and there's a spy. So when you get rid of that, you do open up a lot more chain stab potential. And the instant disguise, I suppose, could create, like, a, a couple moments of confusion. Makes it harder to know who to shoot at. But uh, generally, especially when you consider the, uh, the, the cost to disguise, it, uh, it becomes a less attractive knife. But there is that, that cool niche with the, uh, with the more chain stab potential, I suppose. Um, yeah, and then last thing for Spy is the watches. Now, this is something else I have a bit of a hot take about. I don't even think it's that, that hot a take, actually. Um, because, in my opinion... So, Cloak and Dagger is basically... That, for a while, I think, and kind of to some degree still, was just the go-to option. No one ever switched off. Uh, it was just considered better. And I very much disagree with that. Because, on paper, it lets you pick your timings more, right? Because you get to stay cloaked indefinitely. So... You, you can you only go for your play when you want to. 
in reality though, uh, I don't think that's that's how it works because A, you take so much longer to get in position compared to stock. Um, and B, a lot of the time you're spent cloaked, you can't reasonably be going for a play because you're just stuck somewhere crouching waiting for your cloak to recharge. So I think the... I don't think that the Cloak and Dagger is bad, to be clear. I think it has its situational uses being... If you're expecting the other team to push into you, then you can just kind of sit still and let the team push past you and then you're in position. Or into last if you want to do like a really long con. And that's this is where it gets really important that your team is not like just doing nothing and telegraphing that you have the spy but you can just feed a ton of information and really pick your timing as you see fit um for plays like that the the cloak and dagger is quite nice that being said stock is really good still um because by kind of expanding your range and making it much easier for you to get in position much faster um I find on stock you have a lot more options for your timings and when you want to go. So especially if it's a disad situation and their team's pushing, it's so easy if you're on Cloak and Dagger to just get stuck behind the other team as they're pushing and be too slow to catch up and suddenly they're like taking two points while you're effectively down one the whole time. Um, and that doesn't happen as often on Invis-Watch. Um, and also you can just like sustain ammo packs and actually like have a lot more cloak than you than you think you do um so yeah even into last like in Vizwatch, oftentimes feels like you have enough cloak to get into position and even like kind of linger a bit um and really suss out what timing you want to take um so yeah i i would not sleep on the invis watch i wouldn't just equip the cloak and dagger because you think it's um just has to be better because it it's theoretically infinite cloak um invis watch i think is, is totally totally worth using and they both have their place um but yeah i think that's it for spy uh, i can't think of anything else i want to talk about um so yeah uh, now i guess we can wrap up with who's off-classing and when. I mean, I've talked about all these situations in which you'd want to be using the class already. Um, as far as who's off-classing, it's mostly scouts, and it's mostly scouts on last. Because on last, scout is not as useful of a class. Wow, this is a long demo, and we actually finished it. It's crazy. Um, on last, scout is not that useful of a class. Um, just low health pool. The mobility doesn't matter that much because you're kind of just bunkered up most of the time. And that's where you see a lot of off-classing is when the game slowed down because the, the mobility problems of these off-classes are not as big of a deal. So it's not uncommon to see your scout switch to sniper on, of course, assuming you have the engineer already, which you should, as I've already described. It's not too uncommon to see, you know, your scout switch to a sniper holding last or even pyro just to reflect spam and get some afterburn going, just make it uncomfortable for the other team, um, stuff like that. Sometimes you even see spy out of your own last, which, uh, I mean, it's a timing, you know, if they don't expect it, then, then it could be a spy timing, but you have to... You don't want to feed necessarily out of your own last, so it's risky, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you don't usually, you can have soldiers snipe, of course. You can have soldiers do all sorts of stalemate breaking classes. On last, though, it's best to have your soldiers on soldier, in my opinion, because especially disad last. Because soldiers are a very important spam class for holding the doors and holding your own last. That uh, is very important to have. Excuse me, which might not be as big a deal if you're, for example, sniping into their other team's last. It could be nice to to have a soldier off class or a scout. It doesn't really matter. Um, if you're going for a sap and sack, I think it's best if the spy is a scout, um, because if your spy was a soldier and then you sack your spy and sack your other soldier, you're down both soldiers, which makes holding the counter sack a lot harder. Um, but yeah, it's it's largely. Largely those classes switching off and mostly mostly on last. Um, but yeah, off class TF2 is generally, like if you just like are locked in and actually focusing on what you need to do, actually counterplaying the classes correctly, then uh, it's usually 
not that hard to deal with. It's It can just get a kind of confusing and overwhelming at times when there's all sorts of stuff happening. It more resembles a pub. But anyway, it's uh, probably enough rambling. Just thought I would talk a bit about the off classes, when they get used, how to play against them. And yeah, hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed. <laughs>